you're getting choked out, the first step is, how do I not be choked anymore? One step at a time. You don't need to worry about winning the game. Right now, you just need to worry about how do I get this arm off my neck so I can breathe? If you're an entrepreneur or a leader or a business owner, this video is for you specifically if you are going through or have ever gone through or plan to go through seasons of overwhelm. And if you are all someone who aspires to be greater, to make your life on your own terms, you are going to go through this season. And that's okay because this video is hopefully to remind you, if especially if you're going through this season right now, overwhelming pressure. What do you do when you're inside of that season, when it feels like maybe it's crushing, when it feels like everywhere you look, it feels like other people are winning except you. I was in the gym this past week and I ran into a buddy that I hadn't seen in a while and we started catching up on business and what were the things that we were doing and he had kind of made this note of, hey, Ashton, you know, I really love that when I go to events, I've seen you speak or some of your content online, how you really kind of bring about the other side of entrepreneurship that not many people talk about. And you probably know what he's talking about and, and maybe it felt the same way where have you ever been on social media and it feels like everyone else around you is winning except you? With so, this video is for you and I kind of want to break down some of the things that I think about or I try to remind myself of when I'm going through that season of overwhelm, of pressure, when it feels like everywhere I look there's a war and I'm having to fight a three-front war and it can be overwhelming, right? If you don't know who I am, I'm Ashton Shanks. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Bad Marketing. We have over 170 staff members. I started my first company, Heman Media, back in 2020. And so we've had a very fast growth trajectory. And what that actually means is I have had to rebuild myself, reevaluate, constantly grow, face new challenges all the time because of such fast growth. And so in this video, I kind of want to break down really three main focuses that I try to keep remembering internally as I'm going through pressure on a day-to-day -day life business, as I'm growing companies, as we're acquiring other companies, and as I'm trying to be a good leader to my team. So with that said, let's dive in. One of the things that uh, you know we constantly are trying to train our internal teams is that you know as we're continuing to grow as a company, as we're continuing to work with bigger and bigger businesses, as we manage marketing campaigns that are spending anywhere from you know thirty thousand a month to multiple millions of dollars a month, the pressure that we can engage with and the pressure that our teams engage with is always evolving and growing, right? And so one of the things that we really try to focus on internally is that not really hoping for things to get easier, but that we would get better. Right, Because at the end of the day, if you want to aspire to be something bigger, further than you have now, what that's going to require is for you to become better. Right, And so even thinking back to some of my favorite Jim Rohn quotes, which was talking about you know, when you're setting these audacious goals, right? let's say you're an entrepreneur and you want to make a million dollars a year, $5 million a year, $20 million a year, whatever it is, it's not just about the money or the end outcome, but what will it make of you as a person? in order to achieve that target, in order to achieve that goal, right? Not just, hey, I wanna make a million dollars a year, take home income, that's amazing, but what kind of person would you have to become in order to achieve such a feat, right? And so that's what he really tries to focus people in on. And internally in our companies is what we try to train the teams is, is let's just not try to make things less stressful. Of course, we want better efficiencies. Of course, we want things to be uh, easier to achieve, but rather we also want to make the most intense Friday, the most intense weekday feel just like a normal Tuesday to where no longer in your life where when things come your way that throws you off, that it just kind of crumbles your entire mindset and biology, but rather to where it just doesn't feel like that big of a deal anymore because you've learned how to process it, which is something that I believe that I wish more and more people were taught, trained on is not just how do you have a stress-free life? How do you just remove stress? And this is where, you know, I'm not saying mental health is a bad thing to focus on. It's absolutely important and really, really important that people understand mental health is a thing. But more importantly, I wish people were trained better on how to handle stress. Not that just how do I remove everything from my life, but really it's most of the things you want to achieve in life that are positive will require stress. You want a better body? That's going to require stress in the gym, literal stress, or else your muscles will never grow, right? If you want a better relationship, you've got to learn how to not just run from conflict and, and obstacles, but you've got to learn how to solve them correctly. If you want to build a team, you've got to become a better leader. Everything in life that we aspire to have and to be will require stress so that you get better at it, right? And so with that said, uh, inside of this, really... As you're growing a company, if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, things will get hard, right? 
You're going to be in situations that you've never had to be in before. You're going to have to learn new skills about taxes and P&Ls and uh, the legal system. You're going to have to learn about uh, banking. You're going to have to learn about, if you're in advertising like me, you're going to have to learn more about marketing and, and psychology. If you're, you're building a company, you're going to have to learn more about HR and operations and sales. There's so many things that we're going to have to get better at, right? So if you're trying to grow, you're going to constantly be in situations that you've never been in before, and you're going to have to adapt and learn, right? But then you're also going to just have people that disappoint you, people that try to betray you, people that just, man, go behind your back, and it feels like they backstab you as you grow. There's going to be people that you feel like you've invested so much into over and over and over again just for them to not show you any gratitude. You're going to have to learn that people will make mistakes, and not even if they're maliciously trying to hurt you, but they're just going to make mistakes that cost you. You're going to make mistakes. You are going to cost yourself. You're going to slip up and be a bad leader, be a bad partner, be a bad uh, agency owner, be a bad you know, uh, a peer, friend. You're going to make mistakes. And so as you're going and evolving, you will enter into these seasons of, man, it feels like I am losing in every area that I look at right? And it's just a part of the entrepreneurial journey. So first off, as we go into this video, know that that is a normal season to go through. In fact, I would almost say it is a required season to go through if you want to achieve anything great, right? The next thing though, uh, and, and really what I want to dive into is that these three focuses of like, what do I try to focus on when I'm in these seasons of, man, it feels overwhelming, man, it feels like everything's coming against me, the first focus is, uh, if you're taking notes, this is what I would write down. It's one step at a time. Now, you've heard of this before. You've heard of the one step at a time, right? But here's what I want to paint the picture of, right? Because uh, if you're like me, you're, I'm a visionary. I'm always thinking four, five, six, seven moves ahead, right? And when I start to feel overwhelmed, uh, when I start to feel like the walls are caving in, what I constantly have to remind myself or try to bring myself back to is, I cannot no longer control or think about the four, five, six moves ahead. I have to focus on, and the only thing I can control is my next move, right? As a great example here, if you're you know, in, in jujitsu, you're in a fight, right? And you're getting choked out. It does not serve you to try to think about how do I knock this person out? How do I put them into submission? How do I win this fight? What you have to focus on in that moment is how do I stop being choked? How do I get air into my lungs? Right? And so when you're having these moments of overwhelm, the first thing I want you to try to narrow down into is what is my next move? All Everything else does not matter unless I first get myself free so I can breathe. Right? And so trying to narrow your focus in of going, okay, everything else might be important at some time. Right now, it does not matter. I have to get to a place where I can breathe. I have to get to a place where I have clarity. And so a lot of the times what this actually means is you're just taking a step back, stop working so much because my tendency and a lot of entrepreneurs' tendencies is just to work harder. When things are getting hard, I work harder. And I'm just gonna solve it by working harder and aggression and brute force. But really what you probably need to first do is take a step back. This might mean, craziest idea, you might need a day off. You might need to go off site. You might need to get a cabin in the middle of the woods where no one's talking to you. You might need to turn off your phone because the only thing that matters in that moment is for you to get air, to breathe, to no longer be choked, right? And so the first thing that I'm trying to think of is how do I make myself in a place where I can get some clarity, right? So one step of, step of the time, you can't control what happens four, five, six moves ahead. What you can control is what do you do right now, okay? So that's the first thing. The next thing is evaluate, okay? So now that we've got, okay, choke off, how do I remove the instant thing that is crippling me, whether it is a major problem, whether it is overwhelm, how do I get clear of that choking? Next is to evaluate, right? And so the thing that I'm thinking of in my head is this move, assess, and decide, right? I've got to make a decision. I've got to move. I've got to do something to get myself into a place where I can think, then I can to assess, and then I need to make a decision, Right? Where a lot of people start to get hung up is they get to a spot and then they just don't make a decision, right? And so they just kind of hover in this area of overwhelm or they hover in this place of chaos and they're just kind of like, oh man, everything's going really bad and things keep moving and changing and they're just kind of hovering. Now, what I would rather do, now this is just kind of in my head, this is how I think. I would rather 
make a decision, it being a wrong decision, and but make it quickly and be able to adapt quickly rather than just hovering in it and allowing everything else to manipulate and control me. I would rather put myself in a situation where I have control, I'm making decisions, and I can adapt. If I make a decision and I move and I move quickly, I get, and it's the wrong one, I can adapt quickly, right? Because I'm just trying to get to a place of control where I'm controlling my surroundings, I'm going to make a decision, and I'm going to do the best I can to make sure it's right. But also, at the same time, what's more important for me is bringing a sense of control back into my situation to where I at least am controlling the play, I am controlling the game, and if I have control, then I can make decisions. But I just do not like being in a situation where it feels like everything else is happening to me and I'm not doing anything back, right? And so this is what I'd like to do is just kind of make a decision, move, right? Um, Napoleon, I'm a big history buff, right? Napoleon would constantly be thinking about on the battlefield. He'd be asking himself the question is, if an enemy appeared on my left, what would I do? If an enemy appeared on my right, what would I do? If an enemy appeared behind me, what would I do? And he was constantly thinking about this through every battle, through every ga- uh, you know, war game and playing things out in simulation. He would constantly be thinking about what would happen if this happened, this happened, this happened, right? He's always trying to adapt and realize, okay, if any situation happens, then we're good. This is important in two areas. One, this keeps your mind in the game. This keeps your mind in the area of, I am going to have control, I'm going to plan, I'm going to move, I'm going to adapt, but also, even for your team, those around you, this allows you to lead them well. No one wants to follow a leader that doesn't know what they're doing. No one wants to follow a leader that seems like he's just as scared as they are. You've got to be poised. You've got to have your wits about you, soundness of mind. And so I'm constantly going, okay, how do I move? How do I assess? And how do I decide? right? Move, assess, decide. Move, assess, decide. And I'm doing this over and over again until I can get to my place where I'm starting to solve problems, right? So that's the second thing. Third focus is being bold, right? Being bold. Uh, You know, Churchill would always say, always audacity, always more audacity, always more audacity. He's constantly, you look at the best leaders all throughout time. The big theme is boldness, being bold in what they do, bold in what they decide, Right, and so the uh, what Napoleon actually would say is that the, the effectiveness of an ar- of a force and effectiveness of an army is their size, their mass multiplied by their velocity, their speed. Right, and so the ultimate power of the army wasn't just are they large, but could they also move quickly? Right, because you could be too big but slow and be weak. You could be fast but small and still be weak. And so I don't just want to uh, make fast decisions. I want bold decisions, powerful decisions, decisions that show outcomes clearly, right? You might have heard the saying that small holes sink big ships. And why is this? Well, it's because those holes go unnoticed. Those holes, by the time you find the hole, it's too late. And so one of the things even in my companies and that you might need to be careful of is that you might have too many processes or too many safety nets that are ke- like that are kind of like covering over and masking over big issues within your organization. This could be you turning the blind eye to bad culture fits. This could be you having managers that are really stepping in and kind of doing everything uh, without you knowing to cover up for mistakes of their poor performing team members, right? And when you have these things, you start to have these small holes pop up over your ship. And then by the time you've caught it, man, these holes are everywhere. And so one of the things that I like about being bold, making big decisions, moving quickly, but also having mass is to realize that, hey, if this is a winner, it's going to be obvious. If it's a loser, it's also going to be obvious, right? But a lot of entrepreneurs, including myself, in the past, I've made small decisions. And these small decisions make it really hard to know if it was the right decision or not until a long time has passed, right? Because you kind of only have like, three to 5% changes, three to 5% things of like, like better improvements, right? Or negative improvements, but it's not really clear on like, does it work? Does it not work? But if you can make a bold decision, if you can make a big decision, a big change, a big pivot, well, you're going to understand quickly whether or not it's a winner or a loser, right? And so I like to think big. And so one of the things that we'll train inside of our teams that I'm training people I, I coach is going, hey, sometimes Rather than trying to optimize the machine, we're trying to get you know, this machine, whether it's an ad campaign or, or it's a, this new process, new system that we're building, we're trying to get 100% difference in results by making 5 to 10% changes in our process. 
Now, sometimes there is leverage. There's something called leverage, and that should be another training in and of itself. But sometimes there's leverage where small hinges can swing big doors. But sometimes, rather than trying to just optimize your machine, you should break the machine apart entirely and just rebuild a new one, right? And so this is where I go, man, be bold. When, when it feels like things are, are caving in around you, sometimes what you just need to do is do something big, something bold, something that it will be obvious if it wins or if it loses, but you're in control, you're making the decision and navigate out that way, right? Because here's the thing, I would rather lose on my own terms than lose according to something else that has starved me out. I would rather lose because I made a bonehead decision and then where I can pivot and navigate than just something that like, man, I was powerless and I just had to watch as outside forces, whether it's people, uh, legislation, the environment, the marketplace, I would rather me cause my own detriment than something else to do it for me, right? And so if I know I'm being bold, I know if I'm evaluating, I'm assessing and I'm deciding, and I know that if I am just focused on, man, one step at a time, then I am in control and I am rebuilding my confidence. And for a lot of you watching this, if you're watching this, you're in a place of overwhelm, you have exactly what it takes to get out of it. The problem is you've lost your confidence. You've forgotten who you are. And I know exactly what you're feeling because this was me last year, the year before that, I had like a total thing of like, man, I forget what winning feels like. You have the ability to achieve it, to get it through the overwhelm, but a lot of you need to remind yourself of who you really are. And you've allowed something else to label you with what it thinks you are, what other people think you are, what maybe just the part that you like are always putting yourself down on, what maybe that just like annoying part of your mind is telling you you are. But deep down, there is that man, warrior, queen side of you that knows that you are a powerful force, that nothing can stand in your way. And you need to remind yourself of that. And for most people that I'm coaching, even for me, that comes from a place of making a decision, making a decision, moving on it, being aggressive about it, being disciplined, reminding yourself that you can be disciplined, reminding yourself that you can set a target and achieve it. Some of you might need to reestablish goals. Right now, you're just floating through life. You don't have your disciplines. You don't have things that you're aiming for. They're not specific. You're just kind of giving yourself broad things. And so therefore, even if you achieve them, you never really have a measurable way of knowing if you achieve them. Some of you just need to remind yourself that you can set a target, whether that is waking up at a certain time, eating a certain amount of protein, going to the gym a certain amount of times a week, doing something specific inside of the business, recreating a system, writing an ad campaign that works, whatever it is, you just need to remind yourself that you can set yourself a target and achieve it, right? So that's the video. Hopefully this was helpful. This is a little bit of a walkthrough of things that I try to think about just to recast here. One, if you're choking, you're getting choked out, the first step is how do I not be choked anymore? One step at a time, not four, five, six moves down the line. You don't need to worry about winning the game. Right now, you just need to worry about how do I get this arm off my neck so I can breathe. The next thing is how do you evaluate properly, all right? Once you've got air coming in, now it's okay. Now I can just simply look at what's going on around here. I'm going to move, right? Moving, assessing, and then I'm going to decide. Move, assess, decide. Move, assess, decide. I'm just going to go through this pattern. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to be in control. I'm going to start taking action, right? And then finally, Be bold, be bold. Don't be small in your thinking. Don't be small in your actions. If you're in a moment where you got to figure out what's winning and what's losing, man, if you're just making small little things, it's going to be hard for you to understand what's winning and what's losing, right? Be bold, audacity, always more audacity. All right, founders, CEOs, from the bottom of my heart, I believe that entrepreneurs are the basically the main solution for most problems in the world. If more entrepreneurs were winning, more entrepreneurs existed, we'd have less problems in the world. Uh, And so from the bottom of my heart, I'm so glad that you're taking the time to watch this video. Get out there, change lives, be good leaders. Let's impact the world for the better. See you in the next video.